Good morning. It's Wednesday again. I think I have my time right today. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Welcome. Hi, Mary. Hi, hi Luke. Hi, Peggy. How are you guys? So hopefully I have my time right this time. You would not believe. Last week I got it wrong because I put the wrong time down. I wanted to go an hour earlier at 8 because when I start at 9, I'm, my brain's too much in my real work day. And I, I like doing it earlier. So last week, hi Sheila. Um, last week I messed up. Good morning, Ellen. And this, this week, yesterday, when I put, did my post in my little newsletter that I sent out, I had the wrong time again. I wrote nine o'clock, so I literally got up in the middle of the night and fixed it because I just, I think about things like a mile behind myself. No, nope, my night was good, Marvin. It was very nice. So this, I'm, so this morning we're gonna paint um, a radish. My friend took this photo and I loved it. Um, so that's what I'm going to paint. Sounds like fun. I'm having a little trouble finding things I'm inspired to do. I feel like I still haven't worked on my big one over here yet. And I think that's what I need to get that feeling going. I just kind of feel like I need to be doing something and I can't figure out what it is. Do you ever feel like that? It's crazy, but it'll, it'll resolve itself at some point. You just keep moving forward and it figures itself out usually. So let me show you. Okay, we're going to paint that. Isn't that gorgeous radish? And it's a little tricky here because I still don't have my... I haven't been back to New Hope where I'm filming my, my online workshop. I haven't been back there to get my canvas that I usually use. And this morning, I was going to do the ground of burnt sienna. Can't find that in my skeleton crew of paint. So we're just going to figure it out. To start Christmas shop, Ellen, yeah, I part of it is, um, too, that I'm working on things for a gallery in, in Philly, and I'm making fall paintings, and it's I've never done off-season kinds of things, and it's hard because I can't literally go when I'm thinking, oh, I want to paint a pumpkin. I can't go get a pumpkin to paint it. I have to look through my old reference. Good morning, Doris. Good morning, Rob. How are you? Rob, I'll see you on Saturday. In New Hope, right? All right. So we're going to go with my regular way of doing the transparent layers and then the pigment sticks in the top. I'm going to try. Well, we'll see how it goes. I was kind of intending this morning to do Anita. It's so pretty. Oh, thanks. You like the peppers. They were fun. I need to go to the farmer's market. I feel like I don't go anywhere either this year. That's also throwing me off a little bit. Usually I go and find new things to paint like all the time. And now I don't even leave the house for days. Yeah, I hear we're having a, another big outbreak here in Lancaster. We, we have the highest number of cases of COVID um, in the state, I think, which is crazy. Um, so things aren't getting better here yet. Although I was really hoping. Oh, the music probably too loud. I have to turn it down. When I turn it on, I feel like I can barely hear it. And I don't like to paint with not, no sound on. It's funny, I've lived in a... Do I always grid? Yeah, um, I do. I always grid. Not when I do landscapes, though. I haven't been gritting. It just makes me feel safe that I at least kind of have things in the right place. Maybe that's one of my things. I need to let loose a little bit and take some risks and and not be quite so uh, literal about things, I think. Like I keep itching to do more abstracts. Like, I love my new abstract. Oh, I can't show you my phone case. It's so fun. Did you see the photos I posted yesterday? Have you considered a beautiful head of cabbage with large, gorgeous leaves? Fun in watercolor. That's a great idea. My neighbor down the street has some beautiful garden things, and I was taking photos of her, um, 
of her broccoli plant and it's beautiful. So yeah, I should just keep doing veggies for a while while they're beautiful right now. Um, oh, my fun phone case that I love. I posted them um, at the, the website where I got them. They were in my store yesterday, but I've been just enjoying my abstracts lately. Oh, thanks, Allie. Me too. Love it, love it. Even my daughter, Isabel, wanted one. That's, I think that's the biggest compliment when a teenager wants something that you have. And I honestly don't think it's because she. I was. I would buy it for her. That might have been a, a small motive, but not the entire motive. <laughs> it's always a little bit of the motive with teenagers, isn't it? <laughs> How are you, Ellen? How is everybody? Is everyone having a short week this week? That's what I'm kind of hoping for. Hoping to um, relax a little bit for this weekend. Let's see what happens. I have to film a little bit more for my workshop this weekend also. A few more things. So that'll be fun. It's already fun. I think that would be a fun exercise to do. Um, I just thought about it. Um, might be kind of cool to do like this painting this week. I'll do it in oils. And then next week, like do the same painting in a whole different style and do it in acrylics just to see how different they turn out, how different it feels to create the same thing in a completely different medium. Would even be fun then to do it in watercolor. Just take the same subject and not spend so much time thinking about what to paint, but thinking about how to paint it in different ways. That'd be a fun little lesson to do together, wouldn't it? What do you think of that? I like that idea. Because it is so different painting in acrylics. I still feel like I'm not um, completely comfortable but I enjoy it. So what's new? What's everybody having today? Coffee or tea? I'm having coffee, but I'm not, I didn't have enough of it yet. Um, that goes there. Beautiful radish. Look at those gorgeous guys now. What a fun way to start. These beginnings, I love them. I love the beginnings different than I love the middles, than I love the ends. I'm having a sip of my coffee, iced coffee. That sounds really good. I'm having regular coffee. I'm trying to have less cream in it in the mornings, which is kind of hard. I miss the cream. soft shadow underneath here. I don't want to, whoops, I don't want to go too crazy, but I'm going to add the color so I don't forget about it. Shadows here. Thanks, Elena. All right. Why are the shadows blue? Hmm, that's a really good question. Well, I usually feel like there is blue in the shadows. When I'm finished, they might not look blue anymore, but I love when shadow colors, when a little bit of blue peeks through. That's like one of the things. I, I like my paintings to not be quite so literal. 
So I sometimes add an unexpected color in there. Now I'm trying to think what I want to do in the background. Um, a lot of times I use, and I think I still might, I use my um, manganese blue hue, a little bit of that, because that's a nice cool background, but I want some color in the background. So we'll do that. This is just like a current co favorite color of mine right now. You see it popping into paintings even when it might not necessarily even really be there. Like I'm always trying to have my paintings look a little bit realistic, but I want to push it so that it's not really exactly what you see. And I think I'm always easing into that. I just need to throw myself into it sometime and completely do that. That could happen. All right. So is it hot where everybody is? We're having a nice, wonderfully summer-like um, week here in Pennsylvania. It's like in the 80s. I love summer weather more than most. I should live somewhere warmer, probably. That's fun, just the way it is, isn't it? Your inspiration, I like blue. Thank you for answering. Oh, you're welcome. Absolutely. The only reason I wouldn't answer your questions if I can, if I miss it. Sometimes it's hard to paint and pay attention to everything scrolling by, but I do my best. I think I need a little pink. I love that this looks like it has humidity is high these days right now, 90 degree, 90 percent. Yeah, it might be here too. Yeah, I do too, and it's fun like this. I love this bright pink right in here. Like there's a lot of pinks in there. What paint are you using? I'm using a lot of different brands of oil paint. Um, Windsor Newton is a good go-to brand that's not terribly expensive. Um, but I'll show you my palette here when I mix colors up in a little bit. But it's all different things that I've kind of experimented with and ended up with my, my favorites. I'm getting out my pigment sticks, which are oil sticks. Um, thinking about what colors I want. here my napkins are cleaning off pink pigment these are pigment sticks cleaning the um, film off of it and keep that very vibrant I'm gonna clean this area off here and see if I can get really vibrant 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 pink in there before I put my oil my uh, jar away that didn't, get, that didn't get as vibrant as I wanted I'll have to do that in the top layer all right It's a pink in there. Thank you, Kelly. color that I love. The bright pink, that is fun, isn't it? The bright pink and the violet. A little bit of this in here, because I always love a little touch of this color in my paintings, too. I think I got a new one of these. I hope so. Because this one's almost finished.
that um, is RNF pigment stick, so it's an oil stick. There's the, where's the little? Oh, there it is, RNF pigment stick. So it's an oil stick. It's like an oil pastel, but it really is oil paint in stick form. Go. Put a little bit of this in here. I think that's good for our pigment stick start. Amazing how the little touches, they do. It kind of pulls, pulls things forward and backwards. Okay. Now we'll mix some colors over here. Oh, and I got a new brush I'm gonna play with too. I don't know what inspired me to get it, but it's in my box. I must have picked it out. It's called a Pro Stroke Power Krill Creative Mark. It's, um, it's a different shape and I was using it the other day and really liked it. Yes, Doris, I do paint right over the oil stick. I try to let little bits of it show through, but sometimes they all get covered, but I try to let them show through. So we need reds and like dark purple browns for in here, bright pinks and reds, some bright greens, dark greens, and a little shadow color and whatever I'm gonna do in the background. So I'm gonna turn you guys around here to the palette. I might just move this whole thing. Sorry for the creakiness. I'm going to move this over. All right. I'm not watching what I'm doing with the camera because I would be horrified to see. All right, there we go. There's my palette. And when I bring my things home from filming, I will bring home... Um, when I did my filming, I... I did this work on a piece of marble and it was really nice, no re light reflection. So I'll have that with me, hopefully next time we do this. Okay, and I got new pal. These are the palette knives that I really like. They're Creative Mark. Is that what these were too? Creative Mark. Oh, so these palette knives that I like, this paintbrush is the same brand. Maybe they sent them to me to try. All right, so I'm going to mix up like a dark kind of brownish red for the shadow side of the, the radish. I do love radishes. It's time of year. All right, I need a sip of my coffee, which I put all the way over here. What's the biggest difference between oil sticks and oil pastels? Well, oil sticks are in stick form, and like you draw on there, it's fun to draw with something in your hand, like to make marks like that, but you can't really mix it. Well, I guess you could probably take them off with a palette knife and mix it together, but you don't really mix them. Like with oil paints, you mix them together, and um, it's just kind of, I, I do the oil sticks because it kind of loosens me up a little bit. That's always my goal with it. That's I love that. I love that color. It's so pretty, isn't it? I need kind of one in between here. I think I need to go in the middle. So what's everybody's plans for for the holiday weekend? Most people just staying home. So it's used the same as oil pastels. Yeah, I would say it's used the same as oil pastels. I was watching some uh, someone do art last night before I went to sleep, and she was using cray paws. Do you remember them from elementary school? I loved cray paws, and I know that I have them here somewhere, but 
I don't know where they are. All right, I put out two different reds. I think this is quinacridone magenta and perlene red. I'm thinking I'm going to play with this perlene red and see what I get. It's more of a true red, not as pink. Maybe I'll add this. So I'm going to look for my cray paws. They were like like in a little black tube, I think, and, and the color was in there. And then when you would paint with them, like they were like watercolors. Like if you put water in them, then it would get wet and it would all bleed. Still sheltering in. Yeah, staying in place. I think it's a good idea. I think we're going to go to our friends for a little bit and then mostly be home. Yeah, since everything's... There's been a big outbreak in our area. I'm sure we're, we're all hoping it would have been so much better by now. Not yet. Um, maybe I'll add a little bit of this manganese blue hue in here. Pull a little bit of that down. I need to make this a little bit darker. So I do have some Caribbean blue here. That might be fun to add in to darken it. Maybe just a little brown to warm it up. It's a really nice dark, dark green. What could I add? I'm going to add in a little bit. Oh, that's fun. That looks very, um, looks a little bright. I'm going to hold my, um, no, that's not too bad. The brand name of that red, oh, this, Anita, this one that I used, the Perline, it's, it's, um, gambling. So when I was, you know, I left a lot of my paints in New Hope, and I didn't have many last week, and then I went, I found a box in my closet filled with old paint from a couple years ago, so I've been pulling fun paints out of there. Like, here's, I had another, oh, I wanted to play with this one. This is cobalt violet. Maybe we need a little bit of that in here. Let's, I always need these pliers to get them open when they're, when they've been, um, in my box for too long. Let's see what I can, let's see what color it makes just for fun. I love adding in new colors. I love using, oh, my basics. That's what I get. I was, I was looking in the camera when I was spilling it out, so it went everywhere. That's a really bright purple, huh? Might be neat for a little highlight color. And I certainly didn't need that much of it, but all right, let me let me do some more green here before I go totally off to that. So those are nice greens, but I feel like I need to mute, have a muted set. So to mute them, I'm going to add their complement in. Oops, I'm going off then. No, oh, thank you. I think it's beautiful too. What's your favorite go-to oil paint and why? You mean color or brand? Like my, um, I'm gonna do a little bit of red in here to mute, to mute the green. Might be a little too red. So you can't see what I'm doing over here. See, I'm muting my green so that I have greens for its shadow color where it's less um, vibrant because it has red mixed into it. It's complement. So see how bright and oh, bright and muted, bright and muted. Okay. How's the granite? Have you used it yet? I did use it when I was doing doing the workshop, and I, I liked it a lot. It, it was really nice. Oh, this could be a cool color for the background. What do you think of that? It might be too purple. Should I add some yellow in that? That's a little scary. I don't know. I'm going to just get a dab of Indian yellow and put that in there. See what color we get. Look how much that changed. Let's 
certainly fun, but I don't know if I need that. I don't know. I'm going to put some over here and mix a little bit of this bright green into it. That could be a good green muted color for the, for the leaves, actually. And that purple is a little crazy. I don't know about that, but we'll see. Already, watch me. I could watch me mix. I love mixing, mixing paint. It is so much fun. Do we need anything else, or is that good to start? What do you think? Um, I want to play with this just a little bit more. So, like, it's very purple. Although it's fun to have a splash of a unexpected color. I always try to do that. Maybe I'll just do a little bit of manganese blue hue in there and see what we get. I like that better. That's nice. I know. It's amazing to see what colors um, you can mix just by playing around and taking risks. Because it doesn't matter. You can just pull a little bit of it out and, and see. My biggest problem is that I pull a little bit of it out, I mix something I love, and then I can't make it again. I always want to do a great big painting where I have, like, just... Um, you know, marks of color, and I write down what colors I made to build those colors, what brand, all that information. Sometime when I have more time in my day, I will definitely be doing that because it sounds like fun. All right, I'm going to, so there my, that's a good palette to start with. And I've got to get this crazy thing where you can see. Closing this up. I need better technology here. Coffee's in the way. I might have to pull back here. I'm going to push these away from me a little bit so hopefully you can see better. Look at all my, I've been working on canvases now instead of my hard board. So I have all those ready to go. And I'm making a little, um, like a collection launch. I'm trying to make a collection of paintings that all look cohesive together. And then I'm going to um, make them for sale all at one time. So that's been hard for me because, you know, I usually just do a painting every day and it's for sale and I just kind of keep that pattern. But so I've been trying to build up a collection and I'm excited about it. That's fun. So now I have to do the photography part of it. The purple and bright green. I love the color purple. Purples and greens together are so fun. Okay, so I think I'm going to try... I don't know if I'll be able to do it. Did you add medium to the paints? No, not to, only to the base layer. So there's some medium, that, um, the, this, I have this clear painting medium in the base layer. And then I put my medium away. Now I'm just using straight paint. So I'm gonna try just, um, usually I kind of paint all over the place like I, do all the areas and kind of bring them up together. But I wanted to experiment today with just doing one area at a time. I don't know if I'll be able to succeed. You know, old habits are hard to break. And it doesn't, it's not a habit that needs to be broken. It's fine to do it that way, but I wanted to experiment a little bit. So... Instead of kind of dancing around the whole painting, I'm going to try to paint in areas. I always love watching how other artists do things. <clears throat> find that endlessly entertaining. I was watching someone paint that way where you just like work in an area and then not touch it. That's that perline red. I could have made more of that. I like that. 
nice over for a reflection a little bit here. All right, so I'm thinking about um, the light and dark areas to make this radish look a little more dimensional. I love how much pink is in it. Are we able to watch this again somewhere? I missed the beginning. Oh, Kelly, yes. I will have it up both on the blog on my website as well as I will have it on um, my YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. And you can get to both of those links through my bio um, here on Instagram. As long as I can save it. Every now and then I have trouble saving it, but I haven't had that problem anymore. And now it won't go in my story for 24 hours. It will be in my, well, it'll stay in my feed as IGTV post. Instagram switching things up. brush feels a little large but it's sometimes it's good to force yourself to use a larger brush because then your strokes are um, not as rigid <clears throat> I'm always aiming for not as rigid whatever that is love loosening up Now I am kind of dancing around a little bit. What was I gonna do for my shadow area? I think I was... Kind of forgetting that. That needs to go much darker. Like in here. Hmm. What do we think? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I need a sip of coffee. Does everybody have everybody take a sip of coffee? Is anyone painting along with me right now? Painting at the same time? Oh, 
already good. I'm glad. Not painting with other people. I'm sipping coffee along with you. Good, Kelly. Thank you. This is my favorite time of the day. <clears throat> what do you think? What painting? What do you think? What painting next? Thanks. Oh, what? What you mean next week? Is that what you're asking me? That's funny. I have no idea because you know I literally usually decide what I'm going to paint the day before, like or or when I get up in the morning, whatever kind of is my whimsy. Like I decided to paint this. Last night at dinner, we went out to a cute little outdoor restaurant, which it felt good to be out. And I was eating my salad and had radishes. And I remembered that a friend had posted this great photo of a radish on Instagram. So I asked him if I could use it as painting reference. And that's why I'm painting this today. Oh, if I were to come, oh, no, wait. Sorry, my friend's asking me if he can come get his stroller, but I'll text him back later. My little friend Emerson went to dinner with us last night, and I guess we have her stroller at my house. So I'm having trouble finding like good reference for painting pumpkins right now. I can't even find my old reference. And I had done a great big pumpkin painting years ago. And I know I remember taking the photo and I cannot find it anywhere. And then, you know, when you go through your old photos, then you get lost um, finding fun old photos of kids and memories and, and I end up not being very productive with my time so I was doing that a little bit after I was finished working yesterday I get off task very easily so much for working on one area at a time I don't think that's my gig I'm not very good at that because now I'm dancing all over the place like I always do. It's starting to come forward a little bit, right? I think so. I want to have some hard edges in here. So it's like the shadow stops kind of right here. And goes right up against the radish. Just like that. Yes, Ellen, it's video blue. My favorite. It's one of my favorite colors. It's just such a nice, cool compliment for backgrounds and mixes well plays well with other paints it has a lot more personality than white look dimensional yeah it's looking like it I think I need what is kind of purple in there I don't know or do I need a little bit more of this perline red
the sharp edges they they make a big difference don't they you have to pay attention to where the sharp edges are whoops i knew i was going to get now i'm going to get red in there i'm going to use my fun new brush well now i need a i need a, a, a i need new brushes is what i need need to make a rosemary brush water it's always reckless to I love getting new brushes. It makes such a big difference. No, oh, thank you guys. I think I need a hard edge here. Oh, and I wanted to do a bit in there. I like how that blue is showing through there. I might try and leave that. I do love letting some of the transparent color shine like that. To soften this edge. weird angle to do that um but I don't dislike it I think I need to soften it even more though yeah the blue background's nice it helps it helps it to pop I think I need a little darker down here Or one of you guys sending me pictures of pumpkins. That's so fun. Oh, wait, I can't read it yet. All right. Okay. Do you like that? Is the blue a little funky? I don't know about the blue right in there. Gotta get rid of that. Just kind of mixed in. That's okay though. I like that better. little dot. I love that. I'm going to put that in. Oops. Oh, I sent you a couple pictures. Thank you. Oh, I love that. Thanks so much. I love having painting reference. Never have too much of that. to work on these leaves a little bit more. What time is it? 8.43, we're good on time. I have a busy day ahead. I'm working on a couple of websites for artists, which I love doing now, and a couple other projects that I'm working on. I want to give a hint of the detail of the leaves, but not so much that it gets too busy. Do you ever use acrylics? Kelly, um, I'm learning acrylics. That's what I was saying. I think it'd be fun, like maybe next week, if I'm still feeling inspired by it, it might be fun to try and do the same reference photo, and but do it with acrylic paint. And see how it turns out. See how different it is. See what it feels like. I'm sure it'll look extremely different. Partly because I'm not as experienced with acrylics. And also because it's just so different to, to paint with acrylics. At least for me. It is very different.
Yeah, it would be fun, right, Sandy? I think I'm going to try. I'm going to aim for it. And hopefully the inspiration will still be with me to do it that way. And then anybody else who wants to do it along can... Now this lighter color is that funky purple that I, or green, well it was purple that I made, but it really looks like a nice muted leaf color, doesn't it? Not experienced with oils, but so intrigued by it. Um, Tamara, yes, I love watercolors too. That was my first true <laughs> painting love was watercolors. And I still love watercolors. So yeah, maybe we'll try the same thing and do it in all different mediums and see. Of course, everybody will get bored watching me paint the same thing over and over again. <clears throat> I guess it doesn't matter as long as I don't get bored. That's always the worst curse with an artist is when you get bored with what you're doing. It's hard to even make it come together when you're bored with it. Although I very rarely get bored with painting. I'd say almost never, ever. I, it keeps my interest for, like I could paint the same, if I like the reference photo, I could paint it over and over and not get bored. I think it's getting close. I would love to see some of your watercolors. Never bored of your work. Thank you, Tamara. I should try and show you some of my watercolors. I used to do them all the time, but... um. It's hard to photograph them because they're all under glass. Um, what do you think? Is it, what is it needing? I guess I should get rid of a little bit of this. This may be too bright right here. But I feel like it's needing something unexpected. adding some lighter um, background color in here. And I, I'm used to painting on like those ampersand gesso panels, but I've been painting on canvas lately just to switch things up and I'm, I'm liking it, but I'm still kind of getting used to it. I like all the leaves, I think. And Oh, I'm going to use my fun new paintbrush. I didn't do that yet. Um, would still love to see some. Okay, Tamara, I'll try and post. Maybe I'll post some in my, on my Instagram feed. Some, some of my watercolors. I have to get used to this brush. I like how it feels, but it like lays paint on top a little bit more. Whereas the other brush that I use, I feel like it, it more um, doesn't lay it on top. I don't know, that's not a very good way of describing it. What do I think? Does it need a little more light or dark anywhere? I think it needs... 
paints are feeling a little dry to me today. I think this needs a little highlight in there. I think it just needs some highlights. That's what I feel like it, it's missing. That helped a little bit. Um, love how you can suggest detail in the leaves. Yeah, just a suggestion. That is kind of a hard thing to do, but <clears throat> yeah, because I don't want it to be, I don't want to paint every leaf just the way I see it. I just want a hint. This one. Time is it? 8.51. We're doing really well. I think I need a little... Oh, I see something I'm missing is... Like a little... Where that comes together in there. I'm not... I miss that. That's such a fun detail right in... Here... That's pretty. Yeah, the, yeah, there's always like a little splash of something that seems needed at the very end. But you just have to kind of look for what's missing. See how that kind of lays it on top a little bit more than the other brush. I want to. Is that not bright enough here? Maybe you can blend it a little more. I think that's good. I really run a radish on my kitchen wall. <laughs> it's fun. I've been, um, for my um, collection that I'm making, I'm using these really cute little frames on these too, and I love how they look framed. There's my little signature. I'm looking to see if there's anything else I've missed because it's easier to look in the camera to see what's going on. I think I want just a little more white. A little more of that yellow, right? I think that's good. Now I'll start fussing with it and make a mess. So there we go. Oh, Jen, I signed with it. It's called a Kemper Wipeout Tool. It's just a little rubber tipped um, tool and it just takes the paint away if you paint wet into wet. So there's my reference. My painting. And then there's my palette. So thanks for coming and hanging out with me everybody. It was fun. I hope you all have a wonderful um, holiday weekend and I'll see you again next week. Um, and if you, if you know, let me know if you have any questions or anything. Thanks. See you soon. Bye.